Well, hello, everybody. I wanted to start by welcoming you all to our third Women Who Worship webinar. I know everybody's going to start trickling in here, so I'm just going to do a quick little intro and then we will get started. Um, my name is Leo Halloran, and I have the honor and privilege of representing the Women Who Worship team. If this is your first time hearing about us, um, first, welcome, and we're glad that you're here. We started Women Who Worship in 2019, so it's almost two years old now, which is crazy to me. Um, with the vision of creating a space to connect, encourage, and amplify the voices of women in worship. So like everyone, we've had to get creative in finding ways to stay connected in a time that we can't all be in person. And I know we're all a little bit burnt on Zoom, but I'm so glad that you're here. And it's just such an amazing tool to think about how we can connect the global church and women from around the world to have conversations like this that really do matter. Um, we were chatting right before this with the team and there are over 63 countries represented here today and that blows my mind and that's so exciting for us. So today's conversation is in honor of International Women's Day and we're so honored to have this incredible panel of women here. Each of these women are just deep wells of insight and perspective and um, the Lord uses each of them in mighty ways and could not be more excited for this conversation. So. I am going to stop talking and pass it over to Rita, but first just wanted to thank all of you on behalf of our team for tuning in and thank our panel, Rita, our host, Tiffany, Alyssa, Majesty, Melody, and Lindy for all being here. So Rita, I'll let you take it from here. Thanks, Lindsay. Hey, everybody. I know there's a lot coming in and um, we had quite a large number, I guess, that signed up for this. So just really excited, especially um, the day like today that marks just a conscious celebration of women all over the world who um, are being used and empowered. I think it's just a, uh, just a really rare, beautiful thing. And I love that we're celebrating this. And um, I actually just love the Capital team, worship together, um, Lindsay and Mackenzie and Carrie and the team and, and Ben, all you guys who were um, just so in favor for this. Um, I thank you for just putting stuff like this together so that we can celebrate women all over the world. I know that the women in worship kind of segment of this has been kind of a new thing that um, they've started, but um, it's just been really incredible and um, I've been so blessed by it. So today I'm just going to host this. <laughs> I'm not the host with the most, but um, I love that we have this panel of absolutely stunning, um, young, um, amazing, some still really up and coming um, writers and singers um, that really represent um, the gender of womanhood in such beautiful ways and such different pockets of the church, which um, is just amazing. So I'm grateful and so blessed to be able to um, ask some questions and maybe take some questions from um, from you uh, gals that have been registered that I think you sent some stuff in that I have. Um, but before I even kind of hand it over to some of the questions with the panel, I just really want to encourage you. Um, if you know anything about me at all, you guys, I just, I think that more than I'm gifted with anything I've ever written or anything that I've ever sung. Um, honestly, I think my greatest role has probably um, been adopting my son and raising my son which takes the most time and conscious effort, um, but really it's been to encourage. I think um, I've said this all over the place. If you've ever heard me talk at all, you've heard me talk about the burning that we all have. It's not um, what we are gifted with that we burn for. It's really this, this thing that's almost the spinal column to our spirit, um, to our spirit man is a burning um, or an essence that um, comes out of us that actually can linger into the room when we leave space. And, um, and so if, if we burn with rage or um, unforgiveness, we can leave that hanging in our room if that's what we um, predominantly um, uh, kind of lead with. But when we lead with the attributes of the things and the nature of God and the characteristics of Christ, we can leave a room filled with those things. And it's not about what we sing or what we write, but it's really how we live and what we leave hanging in a room when we walk out of a room. And so for me, I've discovered that to be courage 
or in essence encouragement. And everywhere that I've been, um, everything that I do, my heart has always been to throw courage out into the audience and to um, encourage those that need courage set upon their hearts. And so really it's it would be unlike me to not have any kind of a um, place to speak or to just be with somebody for a few minutes and not try to throw courage on them. And I, I can't really define this because I'm in a conversation with the Lord about it, but I really believe at the break of 2021, the Lord started to just highlight different, even women in scripture differently than he ever has. And I just have had this sense in prayer um, and in just research and study and just really just sitting in, in conversation with the Holy Spirit, that God is doing something really new in women and women in leadership. And, um, and there's something happening in the church. You know, the church has been through a lot in the last year and there's a definement that has happened in the church and you know, rise and fall of different things. And um, we've had more opinion than we probably uh, have ever needed to hear anybody. But there's something God is doing. So when, when there's a flux of something in the world that seems so um, out of control, I'm always um, uh, in that place of looking toward what the Lord is saying to see, well, if, if the world is so hard on this perspective, then the God must be ready to do something over here, and he's really actually been speaking to me about the empowering and training, um, uh, raising up and leading of, of women. And so I really want to encourage you that we are in a now season of women kind of coming out from underneath the chains. You know, scripture says, awake, awake, O captive daughter of Zion, and release yourself from the chains around your neck. And um, that picture is actually really profound in Isaiah because it's not about a woman who doesn't understand why she's chained. It's about a woman who understands that only she can free herself with the chains around her neck. It doesn't say um, anybody else can free her. It actually gives her a charge to awake, awake, and free yourself from the chains around your neck and so I really believe we're in a season ladies where um, God is wanting to do some specific things and in order to get those specific things done he has to use you to do it and a lot of you are in a now season where there's a trembling going on and you are trying to figure out what your calling is um, what your vocation should be what career you should head toward and where a lot of you are at, even asking the questions where do I fit in in the house of God? Where do I fit in on the platform? Where do I fit in as a wife and a mother doing this thing um, that the church um, you know, has available for me, but that I'm not quite happy to feel called to it? And I just really wanna encourage you that um, I believe we're in a season where God is um, asking many of us to um, take the chains of maybe it's idolatry or take the chains of, of self-discrimination, um, take the chains of other people's opinions and, and actually free ourselves from them so that we can actually stand the place that God's called us to stand and to get done what God's called us to do. And I really believe that. I, I wanna just end with this encouragement um, out of this dream that a friend of mine had years ago um, that I really believe is relevant for today. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask some questions here and, and have our panel kind of introduce themselves. But um, years ago, I had a, uh, had a prophetic um, teacher talk about a dream she had about a battlefield where there were all of these men standing in, um, in uh, their uh, uniforms. And next to these men were these spaces and on the ground were these neatly folded uniforms. Um, sometimes there'd be two or three and sometimes there'd just be one. And so there was this line of men with these spaces that were vacated were just uniforms laid on the ground. And, um, and all of a sudden the picture changed and, and there were women in these uniforms standing next to, to the men on this field. Um, and then the, 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 uh, the picture changed again and it was women but there were women elbowing other women out of the way. And so there were kind of these three pictures that, that, uh, that um, she was even declaring that the Lord was giving. And I believe we're almost still in this, in this place of 
of trying to figure out what this is going to look like. And, and we've got this scene within the church of, of it being about guys, about, you know, even especially in, in worship, it's like, it still feels like times are so many um, young women worship leaders and women creatives say, um, it seems like it's a man's world. It seems like it's a man's world. It only seems like it's a man's world um, uh, because you, I don't think you've um, stepped into what God's called you to do. If, if you step into what God's called you to do, you'll realize that there's a place for you and you don't need to question whether or not there's a uniform and there's a place in that army for you. And the other thing is to take your rightfully inherited position. Um, you know, you, you may question whether or not you deserve to wear the uniform, but once you get in the uniform, stand up and stand in your rightful position. And then when you get there, the hard part is that we are as women need to be um, proclaimers and encouragers of each other. We, um, we all male and female carry what, uh, what in Hebrew is called the Rachayim of God. It's called the womb of God. And it means the house of mercy. And the only difference with us is that when God created um, man and woman, he put in man and woman a spiritual rakayam, but in woman, he put a physical rakayam, which was the womb of God actually expressed in the natural to procreate and to deliver a generation. And so we have something different than men do in the fact that we actually procreate give birth to and have the authority over a generation, um, which is, it, ladies, that's pretty powerful. That's not just, I am woman, hear me war. That is, I am mother, don't mess with me. <laughs> and so we have the ability and the power to actually raise up a generation and to be careful how, as women, we maneuver alongside our sister in the authority that God's given us, that we're never, we were never meant to elbow another woman who sings better than us, has a greater gifting than us, is called to something different than us, out of the way for fear that we won't get or we won't see what God is, has asked us to see. And so just as a reminder, ladies, that God's given you something powerful and he's given you something um, with great authority and there's leadership um, waiting for those of us that want to um, get into the uniform, stand at attention, and wait for the orders of the Lord. So I hope that that makes sense. Um, and I just want to, this is such a great panel. I mean, there's so much power on this panel. Um, and what I'd like to do really quickly is just go down the line. And if I can have each of you guys just um, kind of give a synopsis of where you live, um, you know, what church you're with, I'm sure everybody kind of knows, but just to kind of refresh our memories with what God's doing with you. Tell us if you're married, if you've got kids really quick, and then I'll get into some questions. Tiffany, let's start with you. Hey guys, my name is Tiffany. Um, I'm a part of Elevation Church in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, I actually just got married this past year. So I'm about three and a half months into marriage and just enjoying this new season a lot. But yeah, I've been with the church for like three years now and just having a blast, learning a lot, um, getting to be a part of Elevation Worship, as well as our new expression of worship, Elevation Rhythm, for our youth. And so it's been a blast. And I'm honored to be sharing this panel with such amazing women um, that I look up to a ton. So honored to be here. That's awesome. Hey, Majesty, what about you? Hey guys. Yes, I'm Majesty. I am also honored to be here. Like, this is amazing. Rita, you just blessed us. Like, we literally can end the Zoom right now. That was amazing. <laughs> but I started out like I was in American Idol years ago, and it was the craziest, worst decision about I'm just I'm just kidding. It wasn't the worst. <laughs> It was just insane. Learned so much about myself, learned so much about what the Lord really had for me. And that was the start and um, kind of took a step back. And I ended up being a part of Maverick City. I wrote some of the first songs they came out with and um, Keep On Getting Better is one that people love so much. So very grateful to be a part of that. And so I'm just seeing what the Lord has for me next. Very happy to be here. I am married. Um, it'll be five years in July, and I have a daughter, Haven, and she is one years old. So that's my life in a nutshell. That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay, Lindy, you go. Hi, guys. Um, 
I'm gonna be really raw. I can't look at Elissa because it's making me laugh because every time we're with each other, we just laugh. So I can't look at her video. If you see me laughing in my video, it's because I am looking at her screen and it's making me laugh very hard. Um, but my name is Lindy. I am also very honored to be here. Every woman on this panel, I feel like has led me into some sort of revelation encounter of who God is. And even once I just met for the first time here, just so grateful, but I live in Huntington Beach, California. I'm with YWAM, which stands for Youth with a Mission. And I serve with Circuit Riders, which is kind of the youth arm on, we do stuff on university campuses. I'll be married five years in August and I have two little boys, Parker and Zion. They're Irish twins, 10 months apart. And they're just amazing, the sweetest little boys. So I, and I agree after what Rita said, my heart is burning. And I'm like, we could stop there. And I was literally just like about to explode over here because I know God has something incredibly profound in store for us today as Rita even brings questions. And I feel this, the mother heart of the woman is coming out, whether you are a mother or not. I just felt I'm burning as you're talking, Rita. I felt I had to share this right now. Just, you know, sometimes you think because I'm not a mom, I don't carry that, but I feel God is redefining that in this hour. So great. I'm just so grateful for how you open this up, Rita. Yeah, that's awesome. Woo, I can feel it. <laughs> hey, Melody, what about you? Hi, guys. How's it going? Hope everybody's having a wonderful Monday. It's Monday. Yes. Um, I love all of you guys. So honored, just like everybody said, to be here. I currently live in Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm a part of Passion City Church, Passion Music, Passion Conferences, all of those things here in Atlanta, which is such an honor. I've been, gosh, it's been 11 years now that I've been a part of the church, which has been awesome to watch that grow and expound on what Jesus is doing. I am single, live by myself here in Atlanta, and just having a blast. That's awesome. I think that we're the only two. No, no, we're three. Come on, Alyssa, you, you tell us about you. Hey, guys. I'm Elissa. Um, I live in Dallas, Texas. I'm a part of the Upper Room Dallas. Um, it's amazing. Currently, what I do right now is I'm a part of our prayer staff. So I help um, oversee our prayer sets Monday through Thursday. And then I also am a transformational group pastor for our school that we just started. So it's been amazing. Um, I'm not married. I uh, am like Melody, single and uh, thriving, honestly. <laughs> but yeah, I'm so happy to be here. You guys are amazing. Um, I look up to each and every one of you and I'm just excited to be here and see what God's doing. So, yeah. That's awesome. I know. Give it up for the single people. You can be single and still do this. <laughs> you know, I'm going to direct the first question um, to you, Melody, because something in your, um, some of the information that they sent about you actually really blessed me and reminded mm -hmm. me of even my history um, but it said you started off as a, as a door holder mm -hmm. and you started off doing kids worship, which that's mm -hmm. where I learned. That's where I learned audience participation. Like that's where I learned how to worship yes. is leading for children years and years ago in my early twenties, because they were your best audience. They didn't care if you train wrecked. They oh, just wanted yeah. to move their hands and feet. Tell us a little bit about that beginning, because it sounds like it was kind of humble beginnings that led you from there kind of into being on, on the main stage at Passion and kind of explain a little bit about your story there. Yeah, so even before I led worship at Passion, I moved to Atlanta to work for Windshape Camps. So that's, if you don't know Windshape, Windshape is part of Chick-fil-A, um, kind of their nonprofit side of their organization. And I led worship for them for, oh, at least six or seven years. Um, and so that was second to 12th grade girls every summer twice a day, every day for three months out of the year. And it was some of my favorite times, honestly, um, because it was very low pressure, but yet so much authority was given. Um, and you had these girls, these girls who came to uh, just have fun with their friends for two weeks, but 
also you had this opportunity just to speak into their lives and to plant seeds as seven and eight year olds. And it was really so humbling for me to just be able to stand there and say, I was given me this opportunity just to um, be able to speak truth into their life, to be able to teach them about wor what worship is, because I think so much of the time we don't have an accurate picture of what that looks like. I know I didn't really understand growing up fully what that was. I think probably most of us had the music minister that stood there and like did all of the like just the conducting and that kind of thing. Um, so it was really it was an amazing opportunity for me to say, hey, like this is what worship is. And so that was God teaching me what worship looked like. And then to be able to be able to teach that to young girls, it was just amazing. And so I've loved that. And yeah, I started, so then I started doing that at Passion City once I got involved. Um, but yes, we, so for those of you who don't know at Passion City, we call our volunteer door holders. And it comes from the passage in scripture that talks about how I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. And so it's just this idea that we've seen God, we've known and experienced him, and we now wanna be able to do that for other people. And so um, that's what we call all of our dual orders, not just our worship leaders or and those that serve in that capacity. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's how I did it, passion. And then uh, where God just started slowly, um, I guess, how would you say it? He just kind of started molding and, and changing my heart and putting me in a position to where he would lead me today. That's awesome. I have kind of a quick other question with, with that when I'm, and I have, it's gonna shoot off to, to a question for Tiffany because you guys are in um, these kind of entities of passion and innovation that are, mm. are very heavy male led. And I've, I've always been curious too. I mean, I was on staff at a church for seven years with heavy male leadership. And so I understand, um, I understand kind of like feeling your way through standing in your own authority, but um, Melody, how has it been for you coming from that position and actually learning how to stand as a woman that went into the room, A, not make an excuse um, have mm -hmm. to make an excuse being there and then being able to sit down and know what you have to say um, in writing is is worth being in the room to write. Do you, does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It does. I, first of all, I love, I, and I prayed for it and something that did not exist was when I was looking at, I, I didn't really know I wanted to be a worship leader. I knew I loved music. And then I figured out that I, what I loved about music was that it connected people to the heart of God. And then, so then God kind of slowly started revealing that this is what I wanted to do with my life. But as I figured that out, I was praying and I asked God to be able to do it as a part of a team of people. Like I didn't necessarily want to do that by myself. So it was really cool to watch God start to open those doors and create what is Passion Music, Passion City Church, and allow me to step into a role where I am a part of a team of people. And Christian and Brett and myself get to lead Passion Music. And it's it's very um, humbling to come in as the only girl on the team <laughs> and to realize, okay, uh, I'm in it. This It's just me and the, and the boys. But at the same time to know God has specifically given me something to carry and part of his heart that I um, can bring to the table. And, and it is difficult sometimes when you're the only one to be like, no, like I, I see something differently than you do, but also just knowing and having the confidence to say, okay, it's okay if it's not the same as everybody else's because I'm expressing that, that piece of God's heart. But I think it's important that we realize that we complement each other, that it's, it's for the good of all. You know, and that goes with not just being the only woman, but there's so many great, amazing women on our worship team. And it's very, I love getting to see what each one of us brings to the table and how, you know, Chittima might bring this or Jordan might bring this, you know, to the table and how we're not in competition with each other, but how every single person speaks differently to a different woman even and is able to say like Jordan is so good at uh, making everyone feel at home when she leads and I love that about her and so I think it's as if you know if you're a part of a team just to realize like we all have something specific uh, that we can bring to the table as women um, that's different than what guys bring to the table. 
Yeah, that's awesome. That's that's actually. I mean, it's it's to the com camaraderie and the trust is is pretty mm -hmm. cool. What about you, Tiffany? Because your your leadership's pretty heavy, heavy male driven, and how? Because you just got married, so how have you been able to maneuver your own voice um, in that? kind of demographic of, of male leadership because you've got a pastor that that also writes half your music so kind of walk us through a little bit about how you how you're able to kind of stand in the midst of that as a as a leader absolutely um i mean i think even just the conversation of giving yourself the freedom to find your voice and what that even like being young and being new in in ministry for me having like the, the freedom to be able to even find my voice in a place that um, is, is male led predominantly in being invited into rooms that I definitely didn't belong to be in based on my own merit or nothing to really show, show for to, to belong there. And so kind of what I always go back to is just my confidence is that God had put me here. It wasn't based on my own merit. It wasn't because I deserved it, but because God opened the door. And I'd be lying if I said there isn't insecurities that come with, with that or wanting to fit some type of mold or wanting to be a certain type of way that I know a personality type that is celebrated. But kind of like Melody was even saying like, um, every piece matters. Like there, there's room for everybody. And one of my friends here, Jane, she's another worship leader. She always says, um, she told me what she said, the kingdom of God is big enough for everybody. And just because like she wins, that doesn't mean you lose. Like it's big enough for everybody. And so even like in a predominantly male place, like each piece matters, like even the scripture in the new Testament, like kind of every part of the body is necessary. And so if I were to kind of shut my own voice and let everybody else talk in the room. Um, I feel like we'd be missing out on a very important piece of the body of Christ. And especially women take up half the world. Like we need our voices to be heard. We need our perspectives. We need um, the spirit that everyone uniquely carries to be brought in humbly and confidently, you know? So it's a journey. I'm learning a lot for sure. Yeah, I know. I, I I think insecurity is. I always. I think it's a gift from the Lord. Actually, I, the Lord told me it was a gift, and it's a gift by way of the fact that insecurity, when it's laid down before the Lord, actually turns into humility. But when it's kind of picked up and it's and it's worn and we struggle with it constantly, it ends up becoming um, our pride, like our, our, our issue of pride. So that's actually really great. I'm trying to find, I got this, I got my win this window behind me that keeps putting these lights on me. Um, Lindy, I, this is kind of more of like a, a question for you and, and Alyssa. I think you both can kind of jump in on this train quite a bit because you guys are different here from, from the perspective of um, at, least, at least how I'm looking at, you know, Lindy, you started off, this is the YWAM, you started off with this culture of youth and YWAM, and you were with the SEN. And um, Alyssa, you're, you're in this beautiful kind of um, entity called Upper Room. And both of those things, didn't really start out. And I know that that upper room started out as a church, but in in my understanding of it, you guys both had these these, these things that you were involved in that really carried this experience with God and the presence of God, and it didn't have an emphasis on songwriting, on recording songs. Um, that wasn't the the primary goal for what you were doing, and. And Lindy, if I could, if I could throw that kind of question over to you, because we're in a culture now in church where, where this has become almost like a rock star thing to be, you know, to, to write songs and to record the music, which none of that is bad per se, but it can actually take away from um, the beginnings, of what it is, and the reality, the, the foundations of what it is we're supposed to this was all supposed to be. Can you walk me through kind of what the Lord has been sharing with you and how to keep the purity 
um, and maintain the purity of the cost of worship, um, having that not be defined by how well you do your thing, but by um, how the presence of God is brought into a room and we watch it actually invade other people's hearts. Can you talk into that a little bit? Do you understand what I mean when I'm, when I'm asking that? Yeah, yeah. I will say, I love that you called on both Elissa and I, because what's amazing, even what you're saying about the encouragement of women, we have found such a kindred heart in our friendship. I feel like over finding God in these areas together and walking some of these things out together. Elissa, you know, upper room came to the first send just to pray and worship for a week. They did not leave in the stadium, nothing. And that's where we were like, oh my goodness, let's discover God together in this context. And so I also just want to speak in, into that encouragement of women. Of I have felt more empowered in my friendship with Elissa not to get anything or want anything or feel, you know, like there was no ministry in it for the ministry involved. It's this pure friendship. And that's what God is doing all over the earth. It's this pure the pure relationship that the kingdom of God is bringing us together. And I just, you know, to respond to what you're saying, Rita, I think honestly, I'm going to pass this on to Alyssa like quickly. Cause I feel like, oh my gosh, she lives this out in so many ways I've personally learned from, but I will never forget when I went to YWAM youth with a mission, I went in 2007, I had no intentions of being a worship leader. And so I was like, I want to be a missionary. I want to go to the hardest and darkest. I've encountered the gospel. I am wrecked by the gospel. And if there are people who've never had the opportunity to hear the gospel, I want to take it. So music was not on the forefront. So being a part of a missions movement, you go to YWAM to pursue music. You know, it's not, now it's like, you know, there's music coming out and it's great. Awesome. It's beautiful. It's what God's doing. But I just remember at that exact moment, Andy and Holly moved to YWAM Kona and they started a house of prayer. Now you've got this beautiful like house of prayer thing happening. But in the midst of it, we're doing these prayer sets and some of we would be praying about the harvest, God's heart for every nation. There were no songs that we could find that were facilitating this moment of prayer. And so our whole first album, Every Nation, is basically our prayer sets put into songs. And I just remember feeling so marked by that going, Holy Spirit, teach me to never want to, you know, cause there's that temptation of like, okay, I want to write a song that I'm just being really raw. Like, oh, the temptation of, I want to write a song that every church will sing, or I want to write this and maybe this will happen. And there's a worldly system and then there's the kingdom of God that has come through Jesus. And I feel like right now what's happening in the earth and, and in the empowerment is the Holy Spirit is allowing us to see where have we maybe given into some worldly systems that produce stress, confusion, um, all that kind of stuff where we go, what am I experiencing this in Christ? And it's the mercy of God saying, hey, I want to show you maybe where you've given into a tiny bit of worldly system. I'm speaking from my own experience and bring you into the kingdom, the kingdom of God, where I may give you a song that may make no, you may see a thousand people leave everything and follow Jesus from this song. And so it's really like, I feel we're in this hour and this is, I'm talking so personally where I'm like weighing, like, where's my value? Where's my inheritance? Where, what are my daily choices reflecting? What is my language reflecting? What's my speech reflecting? What, why, when I'm pursuing song rights, what's it like, what's my inner motive, like that deep inner motive, you know, that's like, Lord, would you expose it? Would you search me and know me? So, you know, being a part of things like the send, and I will say, I'm the only woman like on the send exec team. It's like, I'm repping the female like power on the scent. And I just feel what an honor and what the other girls were saying, you know, to be there and have all the voices and, and know your part in it as a woman. But then when you're saying of how in writing songs, of maybe things that weren't uh, formed to write songs in every move of God, we see this historically, there's a sound that comes with it. Even the Welsh revival it was when that little girl, Flory Evans sang, 
and, and you can go and Google Welsh revival to find out more. It's when she said, I love the Lord Jesus with all my heart. And she began to sing that, that something broke out in that revival. You see, it's like when I look at elevation and I hear his sermons, I hear y'all's songs in his sermons. With every move of God, the more we've gone to upper room, it's like we hear their songs in what's being preached there. So I would say, where you know the spirit's moving, if you're a songwriter, ladies, if God's moving in your living room, like capture the song of what's happening. If he's moving in your family, maybe you're a mom, you've got kids, what's he doing with your kids? There is a new song. The new song is what is God doing? And we're singing that out. We're singing that to him. So I just think there's no limitations on what God wants to do with songs and birthing sounds. So that's like a really trying to condense that answer of with the send and YWAM and other things, totally not music movements, but I will, will never forget. It was that moment I went, but you want to articulate what you're doing through song to bring glory to the sun, to glorify the name of Jesus. So yes, Elissa. That is so, that is so good. That is so good. I wish I had like a white hanky. <laughs> I'd be waving it. Um, <laughs> Elisa, can you kind of talk to us about, um, because it's, it's, it's the same heart of passion too, but it, it is, it is a different stream. They're just, are, everybody's in a different stream, but that stream has to go into the same river, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and talk to us a little bit about that because I've, I've just loved that end of it too, but I want to know what, where you guys are at. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, it's crazy, really, um, kind of my, my story is a little bit similar to Lindy and I was never really um, trying to be a worship leader um, necessarily. I, you know, I loved music kind of like what Melody said. And I, I just realized like, wow, I, I love music because it's a way of connecting my heart to God and helping other people's heart connect to God. And, um, you know, for, for Upper Room, we started just by praying. The Lord spoke to Michael Miller and his wife, and he was like, hey, I want to teach you how to minister to me. Um, and so, you know, we started in the Oakland district of Dallas, which if you know anything about Oakland, it's the homosexual community. And, you know, we thought we lift me up, I'll draw all men to myself. And so um, we just kind of, we obeyed and the Lord, you know, he, he began to move. And I, I think for me, I find myself caught up in this beautiful story. You know, I, I feel like my pastor has done so well in um, really empowering the women of our community. His, his wife, he empowers like I've never seen a pastor empower his wife the way that I've seen Michael empower Larissa. And I think for myself, I'm like, man, um, there's, there's something about the family of God that's incomplete without the women, you know, like we are whole and we're together. And I, I honestly believe in this hour, why the Lord is highlighting women is because, you know, it, it, it all ends with the spirit and the bride saying, come. And I believe that women naturally, we carry that bridal call, that bridal thing. It's, it's more natural for us, I believe, you know, and, and I think in this hour, it's, it's, to, it's to give the bride a song to sing to her bridegroom that says, come. And it's unto that, it's unto the full expression of the bridegroom. I think she got frozen. I'm hoping that she comes back here. I think she's a little frozen, isn't she? Coming together as one. There she is. Hey. Oh yeah, I think she, yeah, she, I think her connect. Oh, there you are, there's your connection. Keep going, keep going. Can you guys hear me? 
Okay, I'm sorry. I, I don't know where I was, but um, I think I just feel excited um, for the language that's coming. I think um, just worship across the board is gonna, I think the Lord is gonna start um, imparting that bridal intimacy thing onto his return. And I think it's a part of why he's highlighting women because it's the full expression. It's time for the full expression. And I just feel so excited to be a part of it. You know, I, I think I find myself kind of just caught up in a story I didn't realize I was born to be in. And um, it's, I feel so honored and extremely humbled um, at the same time. So yeah. Well, that's absolutely, I love that. I love that you just said caught up in a story. Uh, I, I wasn't, I didn't think I was going to be able to be. And that's, that's pretty profound when you think about, I think it goes for all of us. Like, I mean, I, I never thought I would be doing in my life what I have, have been doing, nor did I ever think that I, it makes me emotional thinking about it, but I never thought I'd be able to see God do what he's been, what he's done. You know, you just, it's, it's powerful that if you stay in the stream, if you stay in the, the, with the, with the heart of the Lord in your sight line, you get to see things you never thought you'd see. And it, it's, the question isn't whether it's ever going to be about you. The question always remains that it's so amazing that it's always about him. So I actually love that. I, I think that's why, um, what you guys do in your, um, in the veins of, cause it's very, it's, there's a lot of evangelistic outreach and outpouring in that. And, um, uh, and it's, it's the grid too. A lot of, a lot of the people that you're reaching are, are, are what I call the, um, the people on the fringe, the people that no longer want the church, um, and the way that church has been, but they really want to go after and find the real, the real deal. So I love that. I love that. I love that you guys shared that you know majesty um i i i was really asking the holy spirit today because there's so much i'd love to just i'd actually love just to sit down and talk with you you know really in depth i don't know if we've done this before even in um in the in the area of of women of color because i was so glad you were on the panel today because i don't want to you know i'm i'm raising a black son and i think um, there's a, a conversation I've had um, recently, um, well, probably more recently because of everything that's happened, that I'm actually really not tired of, of being asked. And I think there, there'd come a place where I would, as a white person, probably feel like, oh, should we ask those things? Are they tired of those questions being asked? But, but as a mother to a black son, I've been very aware that those questions are so important and that people are still willing to have that conversation is actually key and really, really important. And, and so I, I really want to tap into that um, with you as well and talk about being a woman of color in this kind of um, rolling, um, beautiful thing that even Mav City is doing where um, that is one of the most beautiful um, I call it almost like this garden in full bloom of, of different ethnicities and different voices rising up, which is, I'm telling you, Majesty, for someone that's been in this for a long time, that is so needed. I cannot even describe to you because it isn't just a gospel track. You know, we, we have we have our divisions in music and we have our CCM, we have our alternative Christian, we have our gospel music, we have our rap Christian, we have all those things, but Mav, it feels like Mav City has been exploring this unified kind of center of the presence of the Lord with this beautiful ethnic drive to it that's actually meant the world to me. And it, it is in worship, um, the only thing that if my son's going to listen to anything, he's going to listen to that right? because it's the only thing that speaks to him. So can you just um, maybe just enlighten us, um, encourage us, and maybe even, even if it's part of your story to talk about um, growing up as a woman of color in the church um, and, and what's defining about that for you even right now? And where are you in 
um, how that relates to the blow up this 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 nation has had this year with 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 all this um, racial injustice. Yeah, it's actually it's crazy what's happened with Maverick. Like, um, so I had the privilege of being there when it first started. It was just a collective of people who were like, "Hey, we're just gonna get together and write songs, and maybe not write songs. We'll see," you know. And um, it was just a lot of different artists and worship leaders got to hang out, and um, then we just end up writing these amazing songs, and we're like, "This sounds different than." anything we've ever heard and this is years ago and now looking at it I'm like Maverick City was literally like a prophetic group like the Lord literally like put this collective together like what 2018 like before any of this happened and then like everything just took off <laughs> at the at a time where people really really did need it and then I'm looking at myself like wow well, what role do I play in you know like like how has the Lord like kind of w woven me into this and when I look back in my own story I'm like it makes sense like I was the girl who literally like I've always been like the weird one <laughs> I've been I've been the girl who played acoustic guitar when it was not cool like it was I, I had my my hair was huge like my hair was huge on American Idol I had an afro my mom hated it like <laughs> it was not cool to wear your natural hair it was not cool to be like a hippie black girl it just wasn't then and I was the one who sang Hillsong Brooke Frazier like lead me to the cross at my very charismatic black <laughs> and everyone's like what is this you know um but later people are like so sure that new sound you know um so I've been privileged to be like a pioneer um in new territory so um the Lord is doing a lot with Maverick City and his hand is definitely on it um it just makes things seem so much more like intentional with the Lord like just things that he leads us to like they matter and um man I have like a lot I don't it's it's very overwhelming thinking about what has happened with Maverick City and what it means to people now um how many women how many like women singers do you guys have involved in your kind of core group do you know um it's probably I mean the core group is very small it's probably like three or four women yeah. um, you know obviously Naomi and Jay me and then we have Lizzie who she did like Wilder Band she's um backup singer for Lauren Daigle um so she's in it too but um yeah I mean it's not that, it's not that many but you guys you guys aren't a church you're just a collective of songwriters worship leaders that get together yeah. like what does that look like for you do you get together once a month I mean like how what does it look like um I mean we're in group texts everyone's kind of <laughs> everyone kind of does their own thing I'm doing my own thing like I I'm feeling called to a lot of different places right now so I'm very much of an in-between and in a transition myself but um yeah Maverick City is a conundrum I can't even really tell you <laughs> <laughs> well um I've actually thought a lot about um I don't know um it's there's a comfort in um having a year because we're coming up on a year of all these crazy of the crazy the crazy 2020 year um and um reflecting back on the last year and um i've i've never been alive in something where it wasn't a season that i was just having like it was it's really been hard to escape that everybody's everybody's suffered or everybody has take a hit or everybody's in a quandary in a position and and so really I want to ask that general question to all of you like what what have you guys been able to take away in the last 12 months that you know from the Lord um, will always will actually be a new defining chapter in your life like is there something maybe it's one thing maybe it's a couple things that you've been able to just take away from the Lord in the hardship or the strain of the confusion of this year? And, and what is that? What is that thing? And now that's a question to all of you. Whoever wants to go first, Lindy. Um, yes, I can go. I feel like a flood of so many amazing things, but the one thing, I mean, like all of us, I could probably sit here and list, okay, well, here's what happened in these first few months of when everything shut down and continuing on. 
But the thing that has dramatically changed in my own heart, which I've seen it affect my home, like where my kids are, where me and my husband, like it's like our home life. And then I've seen it trickle out, out of our home life and affecting everything around me is the simple phrase the Lord said when all this happened, my presence is the promised land. And I just went, oh my goodness, if I can get that one thing, if I can, it, 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 it's deeper than the phrase, it's deeper than I could even say, you know? And I just felt this, in me, there was that deep groan of, Lord, would you hide me in the cloud by day and fire by night? That I'm coming out of this year, this time, this, you know, cause it's not just a pandemic. It was exactly what you're saying, what's happening with, with race, the sin of racism getting exposed like never before. And all this, it's like, we're in this moment in history we will look back on and go, how did I respond? What did God show me in that time? And in all the ups and downs and different ways you can grab a hold of things, I have been rooted in this one thing that the word of God is the word of God. I have settled any, not that I never believed the Bible wasn't absolutely true, but I have settled this. And it was when the Lord showed me how he fought the enemy. He said, it is written. I am coming out of this time going, I have never craved the Bible like I am right now. And then how that is leading me into this, your presence is my promised land. And it, that has defeated so many false goals, false things I had kind of built up on my own, where I'm going, your presence is the promised land. What your blood did, what happened at Calvary is my promised land. Like it's here. Oh my goodness. And these simple truths, it's like he's been rewinding me back to simplicity in so many areas and I'm experiencing revival but you know it's like when you have a personal revival and you're like maybe it's just personal um, I'm watching like my personal revival then affecting my home then affecting our team and circuit riders and so don't ever discredit what God is doing personally in you in this hour because he does want to use you he wants to use you as a woman as a life bearer that's like something we always when we do these women's groups called brave love and circuit writers and the biggest thing that gives so many women permission is first of all that you've been given permission through the great commission that's like the biggest thing that's hit me during this time and the second one is women are life bearers god made us life bearers yes we have an a physical womb but who be is to bring life and bear life. And as you experience the depth of what, whatever God is doing in you in this hour, because he's doing something in all of us, like anyone could roll out, this is what God's doing. It's taking those things and letting it roll out in your communities, in your Bible studies, in your churches, because what God is doing you is important. It is important what he's showing you right now. It matters to him how he's revealing himself to you and what he's going to entrust you to carry out. So I, I, there's, again, so many things burning as you ask that question. But I think in this simplicity, your presence is my promised land. And that's leading me to a place of action that I've never experienced before. Amazing. Amazing. That's awesome. What about you, Melody? I think, oh, there's the sunlight for me now. <laughs> We're all finding it at <laughs> this time of day. Um, the thing that, I, that I've come back around to so many times in this season is Exodus 3. And it, we've know, we know that passage so much. It's when Moses is in the wilderness and he comes across the burning bush. And the weird thing about that is that bushes burned up all the time um, in that area. Um, what was weird is that that specific bush was not burning. Um, and so that caused Moses, that caught Moses' attention. He's like, what's going on over there? But if you go back to that passage, it says that it's when Moses turned aside that God spoke to him. And so for me, it feels like God has just been using this time to just, he basically is like, hey, reacquaint yourself with my presence. It's like what Lindy, you were saying, Lindy. It's just, I think we have gotten to a point where we, you know, or maybe I'll speak to my, speak for myself, where I associated God is here and God is in this place. God is in this worship time and this worship arena or in my church or when I'm just sitting there with him studying the word of God. But he was saying, hey, I'm, I am in all of these things. And if you will just turn aside, 
I will speak to you and you will see me in these things. And just kind of putting this question forward of what do you really love? What are you worshiping me or are you worshiping the experience of me? Um, or like the experience of being together with other people. And it just, it started this long process that I'm still in of answering all of those questions and just slowly the Lord bringing me back to this place of saying, it's me. I am enough. I am the one who satisfies. You need nothing else. If you never got to gather again with people of God, you would still have enough. Now, do I fully believe we will? And that is a gift from God and that we need community and that we need each other and that we get to spur each other on in our faith. Absolutely. But I think this has just been you to myself, a sweet time just to reacquaint ourselves with the presence of God in the everyday and to really understand and come back to a full um, heart of worship for him. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Reacquaint ourselves with the presence of God. That's awesome. Tiffany, what about you? What would you say? Yeah. Oh my word. I'm just, my spirit is just resonating so much with what you guys are saying, but along the same lines is I feel so like, just the sense of like falling in love with Jesus, not what you do for Jesus. Cause obviously this year, what we all did for Jesus might've changed. It might've looked different. It might've been, you know, church with a camera in the room and nobody there. And so really just falling in love with the person of Jesus and who he is. And, you know, I think we're in somewhat of a season where Christianity is kind of a popular, even accepted, like a lot of celebrities are, you know, talking about God and it's beautiful, but there's also something in my spirit that's like, do you love me when, when this is not popular, when the world is not going to accept, you know, kingdom values and things like that? And are you willing to follow me down a straight and narrow path when nobody else is? And that is what's been burning on my heart. Like, do you love Jesus enough that like Melody was saying, like, anything else can change. You can take everything else away, but are you still going to follow Jesus? And so like, like this year has been so stripping in every way. And so just allowing God to do that in my heart, to strip the things that don't belong, the different pride, the different, even insecurities that don't belong or the different mindsets or perspectives or motivations that do not belong. God, strip it out of me because I want you to be truly what my heart is after and you know it might look like leading worship right now but it might not always and so my heart is in it for who Jesus is and so yeah I'm I'm feeling everything y'all are saying so good so good now just see what it do it's like same my heart is like thing like just even when Lindy was talking about like his presence is our promised land. Like if we are chasing that, then there is fullness of all that we need. And I just have so many stories of like, just during this pandemic of things slowing down like a lot. And I was a new mom at the time too. And it was not easy, you know? Um, and I know a lot of people, we have a lot of moms here, um, especially being a worship leader and, and an artist and someone who wants to, you know, keep it going and wanting to be in the forefront or want, wanting to be seen or whatever. Um, I just have a couple of stories I want to share, like one in particular, like it was in the middle of the night, my daughter's like screaming her head off as babies do. My husband's like rocking her and we're just, we're just awake and we're like, this is our life now, you know, like my life is slowed down. I can't travel like I want to. I can't sing with Maverick City. Like I like literally, I couldn't do anything. I had to slow down. And um, I just like plop on the bed as he's rocking her and she's calming down and I get a song just straight through and I never guys like people go to camps travel all over the world to get full songs they work on songs for years you know <laughs> and he gave me a beautiful song within three minutes while my daughter is whimpering and crying you know and literally the words are talking about how he sees me in the middle of the night and there's always a way out there's always an open door to his presence and that's one of my favorite songs now and if the world will hear it or not it doesn't even matter it's just it's like he's everything he's everything and even in those moments where we feel like we have nothing and we don't even have the strength to even strive for the things we used to do you know and we think that um 
we have certain callings that we have to put on halt sometimes. He'll show you that your your callings are something different. <laughs> They're not always what you think. Sometimes your calling is just plopping on a bed and opening a note in your phone, you know? Yeah, that's so good. I, I can, I tell you, I have a lot of stories like that, Majesty, with songs that came. Uh, in fact, you know, one of my, one of my things that I, I, I don't stare this very often, but I think it's pretty powerful. It still kind of makes me choke up a little bit. Um, you know, writing songs as long as I have, you have like a kind of a, a full, I have a, a kind of a, a mental folder of where those songs go and, and what season those songs are written in. And, and, um, and the Lord told me early on in my, in my early twenties, you know, some songs you're going to write and you're going to, you're going to write for the church. You're going to give those to the church. The church will sing those songs. And those are for the, those that's for the church. There are songs that I'll give you that are your songs to write. Those are your stories. Those, those are, are your journeys and your phrases um, and your season. And you put those on your records and you write those. And there are some songs that you're going to write that are other people's songs. There are other people's stories that can't articulate those, articulate those things. And you're going to write. And, and then he said, and then there are some songs you'll write that, that you need to play for no one else but me. And when I've written certain songs, you know, it's funny, you, you, can, you can finish a song and you'd be like, wait till the church gets a load of this one. You know? and, and usually those are, the, those are the moments when the Holy Spirit will just come very, very close and say, don't ever play that for anybody else but me. And there's an obedience in, 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 in our season to be willing to stay in our season and sit in our season and be what we're asked to be by the Lord in our season. And I know we're running out of time and I think we lost, um, Lisa, did we not with her Wi-Fi issues? Yeah, did she's texting her me. She's like, tell everyone I'm so sorry, my Wi-Fi is down. I'm like, I will let everybody know. Well, I'm going to pray for everybody. I, I wanted to kind of give this last, just this last throw out of encouragement based on Based on some of these subjects, because this has been a um, this has been a really interesting year, and it, it it's been a defining year for a lot of us. It's been a defining year with where did we where were we sitting with the Lord in the beginning of the year as opposed to how we're sitting at the end of the year? Because if we thought we were sitting well and we're not sitting in the same location, um, we were we probably were not in the seat that we were supposed to be sitting in in the beginning of the year, um, and so there's. A lot of those, those just even how the church has changed, and 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 I, I just felt in the last, you know, in early early January, praying about 2021, and just you know, some of us really look to the beginning of the year for the Lord to give a word, and and the end of the of the year, the Lord said, you know, my word is kindness. Ask me for my kindness, and I can tell you that when we hear things like that, our a lot of our automatic assumptions, or maybe just mine, are or the kindness of the Lord looks like a really amazing arrest, or a trip to Hawaii, fully paid, or you know. But the kindness of the Lord showed up in the most um, uh, severe ways, um, you know. Especially even with my son, you know, I, 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 my son struggled with some some depression and COVID, and the kindness of the Lord was revealing those things. And giving us this, this kind of road and this map out. And I would have never said that was the kindness of the Lord, but the kindness of the Lord showed up and just, and just made a way where I didn't even know there was an issue. You know what I'm saying? It was just really quite beautiful. And he said to me, I want you to be careful. Um, and I want my people to be careful um, about following rabbits down rabbit holes. And all of a sudden I, I, I thought about Alice in, in Wonderland, and and this has been such a year of opinion, even in the church. I, honestly, for someone who's nearing 54, I've never seen um, the church in such a position where we're not talking about the presence of God as, as talking about what our neighbor, who our neighbor voted for, or or what our neighbor believes or what our friends believe as, as a mother. It's really grieved me that there's more conversation sometimes drawn away from talking about the presence of God. We're in the presence of God, there is peace. We're in the presence of God, there is 
fullness of joy, right? In the presence of God, there's all these things. And he said, just be careful not to follow the, the rabbit down the rabbit hole. And it made me think about Alice in Wonderland. And the Lord just said, why did she follow that rabbit down the rabbit hole? And I thought about it and I realized, you know, she was, she was bored and she was curious. And the Holy Spirit just said to me, I don't need you bored and I don't need you curious. I need you awake and I need you aware. And, and I really want to just put that out there, even as we close, um, for, for, for us here on the panel and for um, those of you that, is, that have signed in to listen to this and those that will be watching on YouTube, God is doing something, um, not just with our gender, but I'm, I'm specifically speaking about our gender because today's a perfect day to do it as a recognition, but God is doing something with you. He's doing something in your life. He's doing something in your marriage. He's doing something with your children. He's doing something in your church, in your place of worship. He's even doing something in the transition um, and the uncomfortable feelings that are going on in your um, environment right now. He's doing something. He, he's the epicenter of all things possible. And I, I want to just encourage you, do not get bored and do not get curious and begin to follow the Lord into places that only lead you into areas where, where the enemy is just basically wanting to go to, to war. It's that whole thing of, you know, when Alice got to place down the hole, she ended up in a battle with the queen of hearts um, for her life. And, you know, the enemy wants our hearts. He wants us to fear everything that God's promised us. He wants us to believe that God doesn't have the intention of follow through. And I am telling you, um, in my early 50s, God is a follow through God. He is a God of not just follow through, but he is a God who sees us into the destinies that we were all called into. And there is nothing, there will be nothing, the Bible says, that can separate you from the way that God feels about you and the way that he feels about your destiny and, um, and the way that he's going to get you there. And so I want to just encourage all of us today that God isn't finished. He's not done. He's actually in the middle of doing something with many of us that he's never been able to do before because many of you have never been in the position or even as raw as you've been, as mentally challenged as you've been, as, as desperate if, as you've been um, for your family, for your marriage, for your children in this season for God to end up starting to move. And maybe it took... Um, Maybe it took the chaos for us to find quietness. Maybe it took the confusion for us to find a way out of the hole. But I'm telling you, God is on the move and he's doing something. And if we hang on long enough and we stay awake, we stay aware, and we stay intentional about the presence of the Lord, you will find, um, you will find heaven. You will find the voice of God. You will find the nearness of the shepherd who cannot separate himself from the sheep. And so I, I just, as a, as a last kind of hurrah, I just want to put that out there. And I just want to pray for us. And, um, and um, I, I, I want to open and then, and Lindy, I want to hand it to you and maybe just close us in, in prayer um, uh, with, with maybe whatever word God's given you. but. But Holy Spirit, I just ask right now that you would make yourself known to each and every one of, of these women that view this, um, this, this panel and this discussion. That you can use anything. There's nothing that you can't use. And I'm asking, Holy Spirit, that you drive hope into the center of the soul that needs hope tonight. I pray that you would drive hope. Um, excitement and patience and endurance into the, the very heart of the one who is still at the fountain drinking from the well 
um, that, that is expectant of your goodness. However we meet you, you find us and we come. And Lord, I know that you are going to um, do wonderful, amazing, intense, and beautiful things with us as women. You did not make us as a gender that was an afterthought. You made us as an entirety, as an e equality and equality. Um, we are not a better than gender. Uh, gender. We are a, a, just an other than gender that you are going to do amazing things with. And so I just proclaim and and um, and just encourage those of us in 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 hearing world right now of this that you your presence would go before us your presence would come into our households that you god would have the last say that you would have the first say um that you would have the middle say and that we not be able to separate um who we are from from your presence so jesus just come lindy just just close us Yes, God, we just thank you so much for your presence. We thank you for your leadership. And we just thank you for today, God, that we do recognize it's it's International Women's Day. And I just even felt as Rita was praying, if you're watching this right now, I just saw the Lord breaking hesitancy off of women. That anything that's been holding you back, I just saw the Lord in his kindness coming and removing cords off you. Just like Rita said in the beginning, awake, awake, sing, Zion, sing. And then it says again in Judges, Deborah says, awake, awake, wake, awake, sing your song. And I feel that. And so, Lord, we just pray right now that any woman that has felt honestly suppressed or oppressed by the enemy, we know that you have won every battle in Jesus' name. So I just pray freedom and liberty over every voice, over every heart, over every woman that stumbles upon this in Jesus' name. There is just a freedom that God is bringing in this hour for women. And, and it's not, and I just pray, I'm just going to be bold and pray this. It's not about a feminism movement. It's about the kingdom of God. It's about knowing who God made men to be and who he made women to be in the full expression of that beautiful expression that God made of every tribe every race, every culture. And so God, we are living for the kingdom expression. And we just say yes to you, Jesus. We say yes to you today. And we just receive the freedom of Christ in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Thank you ladies for joining us. Um, thank you to all, even those that'll be joining on YouTube. We love you. We believe in you. Yeah. Um, we believe in your destinies. And, and we are supporting everything that God is doing in your life. So bless you today. Thank you to Capital, Carrie, Lindsay, Ben, Mackenzie. We think you guys rock. And um, we're so blessed to be a part of what you guys are doing. So bless you guys. Have a blessed evening tonight. See everybody later. Bye-bye.